It's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio, and it's time for the Mission Inspiration July 2017. And the first, this is an eight step challenge for art journaling. Follow the eight steps. Um, you can use the three colors, and you can use the, the inspiration words. So the first step was to brayer one or all of the colors onto your page. I decided to brayer all the colors which were uh, cyan, yellow, and magenta, and I picked those colors out of the DecoArts fluid um, acrylic paint, and I used my two-inch brayer to brayer those on. I'm using a uh, spiral-bound watercolor journal, 9 by 12, and so the paper is fairly bumpy because it's a, gold, a cold press paper, so that's the reason that I get that real bumpy um, look to it not real smooth and, and uh, clear application of the paint with the brayer but I like it I think it's kind of grungy and cool looking step two collage napkin pieces over uh, this napkin was given to me in a swap and it's just a basic solid napkin with some pattern and I thought it would be good to um, use for my water plants. These are water plants kind of sticking up from the water. You know you've got the blue at the top for the sky, the blue at the bottom for the water, and then I put the yellow and magenta in the middle for kind of like a sunset look. And so I am using Liquitex Fluid Matte Medium to apply these. Not being real careful. Um, I'm doing a pretty good job of ripping them actually. <laughs> And to to rip my strips, I'm using a water brush to draw a line on the napkin and then tear it. And it that's a, a helps you make a good fluffy tear that doesn't give a real hard edge. Although in this case, I could have had a hard edge because there's supposed to be uh, plants coming up. But I just I'm so used to ripping it that I ripped it, and I like the way it looks. It wasn't going for anything real precise. So I'm just, I'm applying them on either side of the page and then kind of curving them in, um, giving the idea of kind of an organic, natural plant look, hopefully. I do have the page taped on that spiral side um, so that nothing goes onto the spirals. I learned that the hard way by getting really messy spirals and then, you know, having gunked up paint and glue on them. The pages have a hard time turning. So I now have learned, now that I'm almost through this book, I think there's only three pages left, <laughs> that you really need to tape those so that you don't get a bunch of gunky stuff that you have to scrape off. So I'm almost done with my little plant things. Maybe they're supposed to be reeds. Maybe, I don't know what you call them, plant things to stick up out of the water. That's what they are. Almost done with those, and we'll be moving on to the next step soon. I guess I'm not as done as I thought I was. Still not quite done. Almost done. There, I think that might be the last one. <laughs> so, of course, I'm going to dry that with my heat tool to get everything nice and dry and then move to the next step which is to add texture with household objects that could be anything that happens to be around this is a bamboo skewer that you would make like um, you know meat and vegetables kebab things and then you put them on the grill you know what I'm talking about <laughs> so I decided to use some copper paint and use it as kind of a stem or something like that coming up through my plants. Kind of like a cattail, only I didn't put the little fluffy things on the top, so I guess they're not really cattails. But that kind of look. Maybe it's bamboo. I don't know. <laughs> bamboo skewer making bamboo. There you go. But you get the idea. It's something that came from my kitchen household item. Then I'm also going to use some bubble wrap and add a little bit of white. Um, I was going for fluffy clouds, kind of. 
didn't really work out that way, but it made an interesting pattern anyway. Bubble wrap is always a fun one to make into kind of a stamp. And instead of trying to dip the bubble wrap into the paint, I'm using a cosmetic sponge to to pat the color onto the bubbles where I want them to make kind of a more defined shape. Then I decide that I'm just going to mix a little bit of that cyan blue in and uh, because the white wasn't standing out that much against the background. Just to add some more color and texture and pattern. And give that a dry. Next step is to drip or spray ink color over your page. So I decided I wanted to make sunshine to make this look like it was a sunshine. So I'm using my Marabou spray inks and I start out with the yellow and this is a, a mark making tool that's basically the inside of some duct tape and I use yellow and orange and spray it down inside the circle instead of letting it spray outside of it and then that kind of gives me a round shape for the sunshine and then I just go and uh, spray with the yellow and the uh, blue spray just to add a little bit more color to my edges and give that a dry. There was a lot of drying on this one. <laughs> uh, next step, add a focal image of your choice. I decided to make a drawing so I'm starting out with my graphite pencil that's a Pintel 1000.05 drafting pencil, mechanical pencil, which I really enjoy. And I'm using a soft 2B graphite in it to make a drawing. This is what I use to make my illustrations and then I go over them with black usually. But in this case, I'm gonna do acrylic painting. So the image is a flamingo and the reason that I got that idea was because of the pink because you got the blue, you got the yellow, you got the pink. Well, what's pink besides the sunset? Well, flamingos are pink and they stand in the water. So I thought that was a good choice. Also kind of reminds me of summer and being out in the sun. And um, I don't know, I just thought it was a good idea. So I'm using some of that same magenta paint as well as some titanium white from the DecoArt Fluid Media line and kind of mixing those two together as I go probably kind of mixing them on the paper. Um, add a little magenta, go in, add a little um, white to lighten it up, blend, make some more uh, feathery looking texture. It's just basically some uh, quick acrylic painting. And it's a flamingo. It's kind of fun. I had a lot of fun with with painting it. I have another flamingo uh, collage that I will pin um, up in the upper corner where you see the eye. I'll try to remember to do that. <laughs> if you like flamingos, I have another one that's really cool that I did as a a uh, collab with Audie G. So you can look at that one too. Then I made his long skinny legs orange and his beak orange. Still trying to decide if flamingos have orange beaks or black beaks or some combination of them. They might even have a little bit of yellow. I can't remember. I could not remember when I was drawing this. So <laughs> I just painted it orange because, you know, orange feet, orange beaks, that seems to be a bird thing. And so that's the reason that I did it. Here I am just uh, using up the excess paint onto a tag to use later. Pink and orange, great combination actually. Probably do some more pink and orange projects soon. And then I give that a good dry and then go ahead and make illustration lines with my black Posca pen because I like them. I just, you know, I just like them. I can't stop making black lines around everything. So that's what I did. It kind of gives definition to the feathers and, and divides where the wing is versus where the back is um, and of course she needs an eye and stuff like that too so got to draw in the eye also I think in this case because the background is so undefined and because the the plants are so undefined having the lines the illustration lines around the, the flamingo 
make it stand out more. That's just my opinion. I could have went and drew lines around all the, you know, everything. I could have made them around the leaves of the plant and everything, but I didn't. I just did just the flamingo, and I think it makes it stand out more. So the next step was to add splatters using an eyedropper or a pipette. I used a pipette and the same blue spray. I just put the pipette down in the bottle and then splattered, sprinkled it onto the page and uh, dried it up with my heat tool. It took a long time to dry, but I didn't think you wanted to watch paint dry, so I cut that part out. <laughs> As I usually do. Who wants to want, watch paint dry? Nobody. So then I removed the tape and the um, interior protection pages and everything because the next step is to doodle around the edges. So I needed to have the edges to doodle around. Made sure everything was trimmed up. It took me a while to decide what I wanted to do. I didn't really want something real heavy around the edges or some big, you know, black lines or anything. So I just kind of did some hatching, uh, cross one way, cross the other way. Kind of like X's, but uh, hatch hatch marks, what they're called, kind of a border. Just using the black, the same black fine Posca pen. Nothing fancy, just I guess it does give a bit of an edge, but nothing heavy. I really I could have went without it. It's just that the that you got to follow the steps and you got to follow them in order. It says to do it, so I did it. That's why. And the final step was to finish with all or one of the words. The words this month were fun, relax, play, love, and sun. I decided to put fun in the sun because I think that flamingos are fun. I like to see them whenever I do, only at zoos. I've never seen them in real life, I don't think. And they stand out in the sun <laughs> in their pretty pink glory. So... <laughs> That's what I put. And I decided to use my own handwriting even though I cannot stand my handwriting. So I went ahead and drew some lines so that I didn't go crooked, you know, going up or going down, you know, like I always would do with my handwriting. And then I drew them in pencil first. Um, and then I go over them with the black Posca pen. And once I'm happy with that, then I kind of heavy up some of the lines and add a little bit of character to the the ends of the, you know, the word, the letters, uh, just to make it more interesting. I considered going in and printing something on the computer, but I decided, no, I'm just going to go ahead and write, write on the page. I don't, I haven't been doing that that much lately because I don't like my writing, but it is part of the journal, so it's a good thing to do. Every once in a while. <laughs> But not always. So then I dried that up real good and then went ahead and put some, well, I erased the lines and then used my white pen to go along the edges for some little highlights to make it stand out a little bit more. You know, you know. And then touched it back up again where my white went a little bit crazy. <laughs> And that is it for this month's Mission Inspiration Challenge. So here comes your close-ups. Be sure to give me a thumbs up, um, leave me a comment, subscribe, share, all those fun things. And that's it for me. Bye-bye.